Well, hello, hackers. <clears throat> well, it's good to have Maggie here because when, when we are talking about technology for a lot of people in the companies we, we used to work, technology is like magic. So it's more or less exactly the same thing. Today, I, I decided to talk about the work I need to do or my team and I need, need to do in, in to Telefonica because we started with this chief data officer office three years ago and soon we realized that big data wasn't enough and we needed to put a lot of things on top of big data so we got into the artificial intelligence technologies and I'm going to tell you the story internally in Telefonica, what was the thoughts that we have to do everything that we've been doing and the next things that we are going to do in the short term, in the short time. So first of all, this is the chief data office unit in, in Telefonica and it's quite strange. It's not a normal chief data office unit. Actually, we have the first one on the left, which is the four platform, which is probably the most similar part of the chief data officer to other companies. In that part, it, we are running our data-centric strategy internally into Telefonica. So that, the, that is the unit in which we are creating the infrastructure, normalizing the data, creating the APIs, using the, uh, the machine learning algorithms, the products that are generating insights, etc. So it's the most similar to other chief data officer units. On the right side, we have a lot of different things. First one, the blue circle is the logo of Aura, which is our artificial intelligence to talk with our customers. That's the digital assistant that we created into Telefonica and it's a, a key project for the company and we are rolling out that technology in all the countries in which we operate. Then we have our smart, smart display, which is Movistar Home. It's uh, it's a, a piece with, uh, with hardware which is running uh, Aura inside the houses of our customers and is a natural language interface that allows of our customers to manage every single piece of technology that we provide to them at home. That means communications, TV services, Wi-Fi, IoT uh, technologies, etc. So it's, it's a device that is part of our bundle that we put to our customers in-house. And the last two are 11 Paths, which is the cybersecurity company that, that, that is creating technology for our customers. It's not the internal security team, it's the company that provides cybersecurity services to third parties, B2B and B2C. And the last one is Luca, which is the big data B2B business that we have in Telefonica. So we are providing, we are helping to our customers to do exactly what we are doing internally into Telefonica. So that's the strategy is quite, quite weird because it's not normal to have cybersecurity and big data B2B businesses at the same, in the same unit that the people in charge of the big data technology for the company, but it's, it's our case. So <clears throat> we started with this vision three years ago. We started to think in Telefonica on a different way. Uh, until that moment, we, we used to see Telefonica as a, as a country way. So we are Spain, we are Brazil, we are Germany. Then we used to have different parts. We are financial control. We are uh, people in charge of the network. We are creating digital technologies, etc. But at some point, we decided to put all together in a platform view. So we started talking about the first platform, which is which are the physical assets that we have in all the countries in which we operate. There are the assets that make us relevant in the, in the countries. The second, I mean shops, satellites, fiber to the home, antennas, 3G antennas, 4G antenna, uh, wire lines, etc. The second platform are the IT systems, are the technology that allows us to interconnect and operate that big business which is, that is Telefonica. And the third platform is the, the, people that, the people and the technology that we are creating for products and services. So cloud, machine to machine, IoT, uh, cybersecurity, big data, whatever. So that is the strategy, the, the structure in which uh, we used to, we start to think about Telefonica three years ago. And we decided to create a four platform 
the fourth platform is to change everything that we have until that moment and I started to think to put the data in the core of the company. So we started to create a new platform based on data and it wasn't easy at all. And one of the things that for us was the most important is the vision about the, the value of the data. We, at that time, were, uh, were um, having the vision that the business around the data wasn't fair for the users. There are a lot of businesses that are going to be disrupting the future just because users are not going to allow them to continue making out money from their privacy. And that was the vision that we have three years ago. We have a video in which our president was talking about that. It's just a few seconds, but I would like to, to put it. Hemos construido en estos años una red mucho más potente, mucho más ágil, mucho más veloz, tremendamente capaz. Y sobre eso tenemos la oportunidad de hacerla inteligente. No es solo una telefónica de países, no es solo una telefónica de departamentos, es una telefónica de plataformas. ¿Y qué oportunidad tenemos? Tenemos la oportunidad de construir una cuarta plataforma. Y hacemos una gran base de datos y en vez de comercializarlo, se lo devolvemos al cliente, porque es suyo, a nosotros ya nos está pagando. Y le damos la posibilidad de que él sea soberano de su vida digital y que él actúe sobre nuestra red. Nunca le hemos tenido miedo al cambio. Si solo consiguiéramos con la cuarta plataforma capturar la confianza del cliente, os aseguro que la compañía vale decenas de millones de euros más. Esto va que en el Mobile World Congress próximo de Barcelona quiero presentar algo que a lo mejor no es la cuarta plataforma total, que ya deje sin aliento. Well, that's the beginning, and, and I was in charge of doing that. <laughs> so the idea is that for the English, English spoke, uh, spoken people, I'm sorry, I put subtitles and Portuguese for you. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> well, that was the vision that we have about data. And it's, it's important, and I, I used to, to say that, because when we started with, with this data-centric strategy, all people started to complain about why Telefonica was doing that. And, and, and it's not, a, it's not a, a reason about uh, generating money with the da data of our customers. It's a, a, a vision about we need to change the way we create technology and we need to put the data in the core of, of our technologies. And this is the data-centric strategy that we have in a nutshell. It's quite simple and you are a technical guy so I'm not going to explain so much. <laughs> but it's, it's easy. We have the first, the second and the third platform generating data. That data needs to be uh, put it in the core of the decisions that we take into, the, into Telefonica. So we need, first of all, data analysts that start to teach us how data can be valuable for Telefonica. Then we need to create some automatisms that we can put into our system. And then we need to create, to put this everywhere. And every single employee needs to be taking advantage of the machine learning, the deep learning, the, all the big data capabilities. To, to do a better job. And on top of that, if we have that data in, into the Telefonica, we can use it to create internal projects. And we are doing a lot of things with data today. We are doing the network deployment, is doing based on, on machine learning algorithms that we are uh, running every month in our countries to see, okay, this is the money that we have, this is information from the network, this is information from the coverage uh, that we have, this is information about the cost of deploying a, a new cable or a new antenna in every single building of the city, so what is the best the best options, and we are using machine learning to do that. Then we, we can create uh, services for customers and give the data, the control of the data to our customers, and we can create a new business, which is today's Luca, and we can create an open platform to allow people to do, allow people to do things uh, with Telefonica data. So that was the strategy, uh, and we started to work in that uh, three years ago. 
So first of all, we needed knowledge and skills. So we bought, we bought, bought a company, we bought Synergy Partners. Probably you know that company. Is, it was one of the best companies in, in big data. Sorry, Nacho, uh, in Spain. <laughs> and uh, we started to, to work from the, uh, from the scratch. So we started with the basics. And we needed to explain to all company, to all employees of Telefonica, what is the four platform. And we needed uh, to make them understand what means having data available for creating technology. So I did this video. It's very easy to understand. I hope you can understand it uh, as all Telefonica did. As you know, Telefonica possesses a wide range of technologies, services and applications. Our three main platforms are different from country to country, and this involves a great complexity. Each of these platforms is generating data, but each one uses its own data models and manages the data in a different way. It's as if each one is speaking its own language. And this doesn't seem very efficient for a data-centric company, does it? With the digitalization work that we've done on these three platforms in the recent years, We've achieved an ecosystem of very robust platforms that offer excellent digital services. But this isn't enough. Our clients are asking for even more. In order to achieve the speed and agility that our clients are demanding, it's important that all our technology within Telefonica speaks the same data language. By this, we mean that each piece of data, uh, be it a client's name or physical identifier, an antenna signal, or the position of a mobile device connected to our network, is stored and processed in exactly the same way in every part of the group. To do this, we've been working with big data teams to build the fourth platform, a layer that allows the whole group to speak the same language. Now, I'm not going to go into detail about the fourth platform, but I do want to talk about two of its fundamental parts. Firstly, the unified reference model, the URM. <laughs> this is the data model with which we store exactly the same information in exactly the same way around the world. But as well as agreeing on how we store the data, we also have to decide how we use it. And the common model for working with this data is what we call the fourth platform's API. When we incorporate these pieces, the URM and the API, into all our services, products, and applications, we'll all be speaking the same data language. But what impact does this have? Having built this common layer, we're now capable to build on top of it technology and applications that work globally. And by working globally, we mean that you can build it once, <laughs> and then they work everywhere across the Telefonica group. You don't have to reinvent the wheel each time, which gives us agility. At an internal level, we can develop things that allow us to generate efficiencies. For example, analytical models that allow us to better manage our network and its deployment, or a churn prediction system. And for our clients, we're able to build <laughs> things that revolutionize the way we interact with them. For example, services such as our new global app and smart Wi-Fi, or even something as innovative as an artificial intelligence. In summary, in order to offer our clients the agility they expect from us at a global level and to truly be a data-centric company, we need to speak the same language of data across Telefonica. In order to achieve this, each new product, service, or app that we make in the future has to be built on the same common Telefonica language. That's to say that it incorporates the full platform's URM and API. This is what allows us to build technology solutions just once and use them globally. Solutions that generate internal efficiencies and revolutionize the way we interact with our clients, such as Aura and our new global app. Well, that was the idea. It's very easy to understand. Even the top management understood what was the fourth platform, and today is part of, of Telefonica. The second part that we needed is, was to deploy it. That was the idea, but we needed to deploy it. And it's, it's very complex when you try in a big company, in a huge company like Telefonica, with more than 20 countries with more than 127,000 employees, full-time employees plus uh, contractors, etc., to deploy that. So you needed, uh, we needed to, to, to transform the business plans with a new strategy. So I create this daisy flower strategy. I draw in a napkin, but it's lost. I'm sorry. I did this uh, crappy PowerPoint after. And the idea is that uh, we wanted to, to 
uh, to migrate data from legacy platform to the fourth platform. And to do that, we needed to incentivize our colleagues, our uh, colleagues in, in big data infrastructures in all the countries to do that. So we started with this uh, trade-off. So the idea is that we started to create some internal use cases, which was uh, big data technologies that like Network Planner or uh, Next Best Offer or Chant Reduction, which is using deep learning algorithms right now, or uh, I don't know, uh, uh, Device Recommender. All these tools, which are very easy to manage, are just point and click was created and, it, uh, and all, them, all of them were completely free for our colleagues, so they don't need to do, they didn't uh, no, uh, need to do anything but transform data to URM and put the APIs of their systems to the API of the four platform. That was a way to, to influence the transformation in the countries. And that was the, my daisy flower and it was a, uh, Daisy Flower strategy internally into, into Telefonica, and we've been running that strategy until today. We are still doing exactly the same. We are creating tools for our, our colleagues that are helping us to migrate legacy data to the URM and uh, technology to the new APIs of the four platform. After that, we have started to, to create technology. Technology in different levels. First one, the technology like Neptuno, Smart Pricing, Value Added Services, or iScore, which are uh, internal use cases with that, uh, with that uh, aim, the idea of transform data and APIs. But after that, we have started to work to transform technology that we can create from, from data, like Luca Smart Steps, Luca Comms, Device Recommender, which are technology that are generating revenues. So, <clears throat> and on top of that, we have started to create Aura, which is the use case that accomplishes the promise of giving control to our, to our customers about the data, the Telefonica technology that uh, they are using. So <clears throat> taking this into, into the path, we realized that we needed to change the strategy and that the new future was here. We needed to, to think on a different way of generating the interfaces. So we started to think about cognitive services and uh, the idea is, is quite simple. We have the vision that human have been learning computing interfaces for a long, and it's time now for computing technologies to learn the human interfaces. So that was the vision that we have, and we started to, to work in natural language processing from the beginning with this, with this strategy. And the, the trigger in my mind was my, my doctor, my small uh, daughter talking to Sairi. This was one week before Christmas, years ago. ¿Y qué día soy? Pregúntaselo. Pregúntale cuándo viene Papá Noel. ¿Cuándo viene Papá Noel? ¿Tú te has portado bien? Mm. <laughs> of course. <laughs> well, at that, that day I realized that uh, natural language technology was mature enough to create corporate technology. So we started to work in, in, in cognitive services in, as a common interface for all technologies that we were creating in, in, the, in the chief data officer office unit. I'm not going to explain details, you know that, and the problems, probably you know all problems when you are trying to recognize the, recognize the intent in, in, in Spanish. We have serious problems trying to recognize, I don't know, actors' names like Arnold Schwarzenegger or um, Sylvester Stallone or John Bainey. O sea, no lo podéis, <laughs> you cannot believe it, the problems that we have. We needed to do a hard training to our, to our artificial intelligence to recognize how in Spain we pronounce uh, English names. So, well, the idea is that we wanted to, to use cognitive services and we use it in, in all the interfaces that we are put into our customers, and this is the strategy. In this case, I didn't lose the napkin. This is the idea about we wanted to create 
two years ago, which is something that I call JOT. That means you own Telefonica, and the idea is that JOT is a bot that can connect to different uh, channels using natural, natural language and cognitive services, and then with that JOT, you will be able to manage all the data that we have on the four platform that belongs to you and the APIs to do things into, into Telefonica. So as you can see, we have the first, second, and third platform, and the four platform with different layers. First one is the big data infrastructure in all the countries, in every country. We normalize technology, normalize the data with the URM, we put quality tests to, to make sure that the data was correct, and then using the data daisy flower strategy, as you can see in the bottom left. And, and then we created something that we call, at the beginning, personal data bank, but we decided to change it to personal data space. Probably in the future, the idea of personal data bank will, will uh, come again, because the world is changing, and people start to realize that data is, is, val is valuable, data is money. And in that personal data, data space, we have the option of, first of all, we store the raw data that is generating for our customers by using our Telefonica services. And then we generate knowledge insights using business intelligence, machine learning algorithms, and today, deep learning, using deep learning techniques for, for machine learning. And of course, we have the, the idea of the compliance with GDPR that creates to create a personal information management platform and giving the, the customer the option, the capability of take away the data from the beginning. Because we believe that data is something that, that can enrich the life of our customers. We believe that data is good for life. And if we delete the data that you generated while you were a, a Telefonica customer, we are deleting, we are destroying your richness. So we believe that if you want to take away your data, you can, you can, uh, you can do it. Because of that, this floppy disks, how many of you recognize the floppy disks? All. I needed to explain this to my daughter. <laughs> so in 2017, uh, February 2017, we launched Aura, which is Jot, the people from Brand Experience decide that Jot was good for me, but not for the customers. So they changed the name to Aura, and we launched Aura. I, I, I have this small video because I was in one rehearsal, and when we presented uh, Aura, I used Hololens, and it was amazing because I was using Hololens, holograms in on the room. Everything was like magic, but for me, it was the worst. Uh, talk I ever done, it was a pain in the ass. I needed to do more than 30 different rehearsals. I needed to know exactly where I need to step every single second. The things that I was telling was, uh, was uh, writing in one script that I needed to memorize and I needed to coordinate with the camera guy to be exactly in the same position that he want me to be and doing the things that he want me to do. So this is the In a rehearsal. simple way, a way that would help them to get the most from us, to take advantage of the info our services have, to enjoy their digital lives more, to take decisions about their telephonic services, and also about other internet services using the information they <laughs> already have. And as much as possible, giving them control and empowering them in their lives in the digital space. To do that, we started to work. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> the worst part is that my HoloLens were uh, switched off because the real HoloLens were in the camera guy. So I was blinded. <laughs> At that moment, I couldn't see anything. It was amazing. <laughs> so. We created Jot, we created Aura, we, and we started with three, three powers. First one is talk to technology and get things done in real time. It was uh, a big promise for Telefonica. We are a, a almost 100 year company, which is very complex uh, to manage. With, uh, we've been uh, growing up inorganically, so we are more than 10 different companies. We are O2, we are Vivo, we are Telespi, we are Telefonica de Chile, we are 
Telefónica of Spain, and systems and technology are completely different, and we have, I don't know, phone boxes still on the, uh, on the street, so we have a lot of technology, and giving the promise of talk to technology and get things done in real time was, was very, very brave, and we are still working on that. Then we have the second power, which is transparency and clearness. We want to be clear and transparent, and being transparent in a clear way doesn't mean to be compliant, because you can be compliant and not be transparent and clear at all. And the third one is the, the idea uh, about uh, data that we have. We believe that data can enrich your life, and you are the you are in control of, of your data, at least in, into Telefonica. That was the roadmap that we have internally. Uh, one year to, to launch Aura in six countries. We decided to, uh, to do it in an easy way. So we select Brazil in Portuguese, Spain in Spanish, Chile in another Spanish, Argentina in I don't know what language is it, <laughs> Germany in German, and, and the UK. So it was... A, big, <laughs> a lot of work for the people in charge of natural language interaction. So we did it and we created this, uh, this, this strategy to work and the idea is quite simple. We have our it's just an interface. We are using artificial intelligence just for the cognitive services to recognize, recognize the interaction. So uh, we receive the signal. Uh, it doesn't matter what is the channel that our customer select to give us the channel, the, the signal. It doesn't matter if it's Facebook Messenger using a chat or uh, a mobile app with point and click or just talking to uh, our app or Alexa or Google Home. It, it doesn't matter. Or WhatsApp. We launch our uh, uh, in WhatsApp in, in Brazil. So we receive the signal, we use cognitive services to recognize the utterance and all information related to it. Then we go to the intent recognition module, which is based in Luis, in, in Microsoft technology, and we have a lot of people teaching Aura how Arnold Schwarzenegger, Arnold Schwarzenegger is Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> and then once that we recognize the recognize the intent, we are creating all technology behind, behind that, and we are doing different use cases. And to do that, use cases that we classify in, in four different levels. First one is simplify, second one is enrich, third one is empower, and fourth one is discover. We, uh, we do things. That use case use data from the four platform. As you can see, the four platform is is the core of the data. This is the, where the data-centric strategy in Telefonica is working. And we have the personal data spaces in which we are running uh, technology to generate insights. And then the API gateway, which is responsible for the APIs of the four platform. And that two pieces are, are what allows us to create technology globally. Because it doesn't matter if the first, second, third platform are generating data in different ways because data is stored using URM, which is our uh, data, data model in the four platform. And it doesn't matter what are the APIs that they are using internally in, in IT or systems because we have the API gateway, the API gateway of the four platform, which is common and it's exactly the same for, for all countries. So this is more or less the artificial intelligence that we are creating internally, the digital assistant that we have in, in to Telefonica. So we have the interaction area, which is based in cognitive services using, using Aura, the understanding, the teaching part, the rationing, the planning, the learning, the memory, the environment, the feeling, the interacting with third party that we have. We have interaction with, I don't know, with Facebook, with UNICEF, with different uh, organizations that uh, that are um, sharing data with users. Users decide if they want to share data with them or not. And then we put moral. We believe that you cannot do everything with, uh, without self-controlling. And when I'm talking about moral, people start to think about, I don't know, uh, Saturn III or uh, Blade Runner or all the other things. We are putting some controls about the, the, the decisions that Aura is taking into the, into the company. So we start with some use cases we needed to, to select. It's impossible to do everything. 
and we launch with very, very, very simple uh, cases. This case is in vivo, and it's just to know information about your build. Aura, qual o meu saldo de recarga? O saldo da sua conta é R$ 15,70, com validade até 5 de março de 2018. That is. <laughs> well, it's a that use case which is very simple, it's very complex uh, in behind because we need to do the personal data spaces, we need to have the APIs to get information, we need to recognize everything that I show I show you before in the in the slides uh, about the, in the architecture. Uh, but that use case is generating a lot of cost to Telefonica because we are paying for a contact center and a lot of people are calling us to, to ask that because they are not uh, used to search for option in apps or whatever. So we start to think in simplification and then we are moving on to uh, different use cases. Today, when our customers are calling to our contact center in Brazil, they are talking to Aura, but most of them, they don't know it. In some use cases, it's Aura, which is answering the, the call. And in Spain, which is different, we put it in Hola amigos, me han pedido que os explique cosas de Aura, así que me ha tocado explicaros cómo se puede poner una película utilizando Aura. En este caso, como a mí me gustan mucho los superhéroes y en Movistar Plus tenemos un montón de películas, pues os voy a explicar todo lo que habría que hacer para poner una película de superhéroes. Quiero ver películas de Superman. Esto es lo que he encontrado sobre Superman. Ponlo en la tele. Y ya está. Bueno, y con todo este tiempo que me sobra, pues voy a explicaros otras cosas. En este caso, yo he elegido contaros cómo poder hacer un oli en un monopatín. Venid conmigo. Hacer un oli es muy sencillo, o por lo menos en la teoría. Solo hay tres pasos. La teoría es muy fácil, pero vamos a ver qué tal se da la práctica. Una. Watch the video, the full video in YouTube. I'm not going to share it here. Well, it's in Spanish because it's, it's a, a use case only for, for Spanish and it's quite simple. Uh, we are putting Aura uh, to control TV services and it's, it's wonderful because a lot of the features that we have on TV was completely hidden for, for our customers. They discovered that they can put in the video from the beginning and uh, online content which is in is live content, they can put it uh, from the beginning, they can change the, uh, to the original version because we have all content in original version, etc. A lot of features that are hidden for our customers is easy to them to manage. And we are, and we put it in production in our, in actually in four countries in different, I'm going to show you exactly all the channels in which our is right now, and is increasing in a, in, in a wonderful way. So this is the active users for the end of the, we are not city, we are talking only about Telefonica customers, which is, uh, is, is quite, quite less. And the idea is that people are um, uh, um, embracing the use of Aura to interact with Telefonica day by day. And it's a strategy to, to be in all channels, in Google Assistant, WhatsApp, Facebook Messenger, Movistar, a smart display, which is Movistar Home, in the web, etc. So we are rolling out Aura in, in all channels. And the idea of creating Movistar Home is that we test it in real before creating the, the product. And this, uh, after three months with Aura, we recorded this video. We asked people to allow us to record it, but they didn't, they didn't know exactly what was going to happen. And we put it Aura in one, in one uh, tablet, they can talk to Aura and control all Telefonica services, and this is the experience, which is quite nice. Hola, esta es una cabina como las de antes. Hola, buenos días. ¿Te apetece conocer Aura? Eh, sí. De acuerdo, pues mira, acompáñame. Pero, ¿Para qué es? Mira, vas a poder gestionar todo lo que tienes contratado con Movistar a través de la voz, ¿de acuerdo? Vale, a través de la voz. Qué chulo. La saludo, ¿no? Hola, Aura. 
Hola, soy Aura, la inteligencia artificial de Movistar. Háblame. Estoy aprendiendo cosas que te ayuden a simplificar tu vida en Movistar para ofrecerte un mejor servicio. Puedes pedirme que te ayude a controlar tu televisor. Canal Viajar. Voy a poner Viajar. Pónmelo desde el principio. Poniendo el programa desde el principio. Películas de acción. Mira a ver qué te parecen estos contenidos. Búscame la última película de Brad Pitt. Claro, dame un segundo. ¿No es esta? Ah, oh, no. Trella, trella. El contenido se ha enviado a tu televisión. ¡Ay, ya empieza la peli! ¿Puedo ver fútbol? Voy a poner Movistar Fútbol. Sí, sí, nos quedamos en la cabina. ¡Conéctame al wifi! Aquí tienes las claves de acceso. Prueba a conectarte con tu móvil. Ah, genial. Vamos a conectarnos. Perfecto. Y además me entiende bien, ¿eh? ¿Qué servicios tengo contratados? Estos son los servicios que tienes contratados. ¿Verdad? Sí. Justo. Ahora, ¿me enseñas la factura de este mes? Teniendo tu facturación. Sí, me he pasado un poco. Me he estado... Ay, no sé si quiero revisar mi factura. <risa> Hasta ahora solo sabía algunas cosas sobre ti. Pues ahora sabes demasiado. A ver si te conoce mejor que yo. Well. We, we know everything <laughs> because it's not magic. The idea is that at the beginning, every, every customer needs to type their mobile phone number. So we do a, a double check. We send a, um, a one-time password to validate that is the owner of the mobile phone. And then we connect to the personal data space. And then we have access to, to everything. And we started with very simple use cases. and. And after that, we are rolling out new use cases to predict when are you, going to, you are going to be run out of data, or what is the uh, bill information that probably you will have next month, or whatever, or what are the, the movies that you probably like, etc. So we started to work in, in Movistar Home. This is the way uh, we create technology. We, we do a lot of research with users, customers, and then we start to think about all the use cases that we needed to put into Movistar Home, managing content, managing Wi-Fi, managing everything. So it's not, it's not magic, it's not uh, artificial intelligence creating technology by itself, are engineers just doing their magic. So that's the idea. And I recorded this video because sometimes when I have a, a discussion with some executive just to say, Mm, I don't know if I'm going to use this technology that way because in my house I use this. Okay, we did our research, we have a lot of engineers working on this, we did design thinking, we tested with the users for real, we design every single screen, every single interaction, probably you are not our target. So that's the, the idea. So we started thinking about that and to create a Movistar Home using Aura, which is our artificial intelligence, and this is the end. So we launched uh, Movistar Home uh, this year uh, in February in Mobile World Congress 2019. It's, it's one smart display with easy things. Con Chema para que nos enseñe unas cosillas nuevas sobre Aura. Miquel, ¿tú te acuerdas que en el Mobile World Congress estuvimos presentando Movistar Home? <risa> Donde te conectaste desde Vitoria a través de videoconferencia. Movistar Home controla todos los servicios de tecnología que tenés con Telefónica en el hogar. Y es un teléfono, te permite hacer llamadas, gestionar la tele, gestionar la wifi, etc. Esto es como una ruleta rusa, esto tiene una inteligencia artificial que te entiende. Y si no te entiende, sube dos veces el turmalet. Así que, Nairo, te toca empezar a hablar con Movistar Home. Ok, ahora enciende la tele. Hecho. Bueno, muy bien. Cuando suena ese sonido es que te ha entendido perfectamente. Ahora vamos contigo, Alejandro. Ok, Aura, pon el canal cero. Hecho. Perfecto. Ha ido bien, ha ido bien, ha ido bien. Miquel. Ok, Aura, enciende la luz. De acuerdo. A partir del 3 de... Well, quite, quite simple. Just managing uh, telephonic services at home. It's quite, quite... When we were recording that video, it was challenging because Nairo is from Colombia and we didn't test this uh, with Colombian accent. Uh, and Valverde is from Murcia. I'm not telling you anything about Murcia. <laughs> 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 so, 
So, well, we launched uh, uh, Movistar Home, and it's, uh, we are rolling out the first devices to our customers uh, in two weeks. And that's the idea. We put it out in the core of technology that we have in our customers' houses. And we believe that Aura is going to be the operating system for us to manage houses, because Telefonica is the first technology provider at home right now. We have wireless phones, we have mobile phones in the same bundle, we have TV, we have the set of box, which allows us to do magic with TV. We control every TV screen with, uh, it doesn't matter what is the manufacturer, because we use the HDMI channel to manage TV, we have a smart Wi-Fi, we have IoT connected to a smart Wi-Fi. We have a lot of technology in our customers' houses, and we wanted to put an operating system, and that operating system is, is Aura. And well, we, el, el honor we launched it, and we tested it with customer, and this is the live video. Creemos que es el momento en el que la tecnología aprenda los interfaces de los humanos, y por eso hemos creado Movistar Home para reinventar las comunicaciones y la televisión en el hogar gracias al poder de Aura. Hola, ¿qué tal? Buenos días. ¿Te apetecería conocer Movistar Home? Sí, sí vale. Sí, ya lo conozco, lo he visto en, en los anuncios. A través de Movistar Home puedes hablar con Aura, que es el asistente virtual que te va a gestionar la televisión, el teléfono y la red wifi. Que yo la tengo que hablar. Claro, es que decirle OK, Aura. OK, Aura, ponme una película de acción. He encontrado varios contenidos de cine de acción. Nos lo veremos. Nos lo veremos. OK, Aura, pon la 1. Claro. Lo entiende perfectamente. Perfectamente. Una película de terror. He encontrado varios contenidos de cine de terror. OK, Aura, pónmelo en la tele. Claro. ¿Puedo pedir algo de la televisión? Puedo pedir lo que quieras. Dime qué ponen esta noche en Antena 3. Estos son los contenidos que se emitirán en Antena 3 próximamente. Eh, qué bueno. Ok, Aura, recomiéndame series. Echa un vistazo a estos Anda, contenidos. Guay. Y ahora elijo la que yo quiero. Mira, pues esta, por ejemplo. Esa. ¿Cuándo es la próxima carrera de coches? Mira, hay varios eventos de motor interesantes. Qué bueno, o sea que entonces con esto casi puedes prescindir del mando. Si queréis probar alguna cosilla, podéis encender y apagar las luces también. Enciende la luz. ¿Qué vais? Esto está genial, ¿eh? Es it's, it's amazing for for kids, my my daughters, for them is is normal. It should work that way. For people like us, it's like uff, it worked. <laughs> Very old, and for people like my mom, it's like magic. It's, no, it cannot be. It's impossible. Someone is uh, moving the pieces on behind the behind the scene. No? So that's the idea. We started to work with with a data centric strategy. With data, we created the four platform as a key enabler for everything. Then we bought a company to uh, fuel. Telefonica with knowledge and with skills, we start to create tools in the, and, and automate system into our business, like smart pricing, value added services. We use this internally. We create uh, services for customers that are generating revenues. We create an artificial intelligence to manage the interaction, and we create a business uh, business unit, which is Luca, to to take advantage of all the knowledge that we created internally. And the question is, it was easy? It was easy? Well, it wasn't easy at all. If, if, and if you are working in, in a big company, probably you know all the difficulties that you will probably have doing a strategy like this. But we are more than sure and confident that this is the right way, the right path to choose. So this is it. Thank you very much.